Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires today. The baby's finally down for a nap. The apartment is quiet and we're sitting down to watch the Viper playing as the Saracens in yellow take on Mr. Yo playing as the Italians in blue. And while the players heard their herdables explore their enclosed off immediate surroundings, get the sheep, there you go, and try to go up to feudal, possibly even castle as fast as possible. Let's take a quick look at the map and then dive into the sieves that we're watching. Now, if you're not, fami not familiar with Hideout, I'm going to zoom out. Apologies to anyone on a smaller screen. As you can tell, this is an enclosed map where players start in a base. There is a big forest between them, and there are essentially three avenues of attack into one another. They can mine, rather lumberjack, through the forest and try to attack each other that way. Then there is a short path to get to one another's base, and then there's usually a long path to get to one another's base. Generally, we see option number two used between players as the shorter route is usually the one that leads to the most excitement and the most aggression earlier on. So that is the map that we are witnessing today and we'll see who is the aggressor, who is the defender, and we'll see what kind of chaos erupts as generally does on this map, as uh, <laughs> it generally does on many enclosed maps. But in any event, the Saracens, one of my favorite civs of civilization, with an incredibly strong market that can be used to gain an early game, maybe even a mid game advantage over your opponents. To start with, your market only costs 75 wood and the commodity trading fee is fixed at 5%, which is significantly lower than the usual 30% that other sieves have to pay when, for example, they buy food early on in the game to go up to fast castle. Now using this economic advantage, the Saracens can field quite a heavy hitting tanky army to start with, their foot archers come with a pretty big plus three attack bonus against buildings, which makes Saracen Feudal Age aggression quite scary. Their camel riders and their heavy camel riders all come with extra HP and can be upgraded to get even more HP. Their trebs, mangonels, and onagers can be upgraded to increase their attack. And their unique unit is the Mameluke. This is a ranged melee camel unit that comes with a big attack bonus against cavalry and whose HP can be upgraded just like any other camel units of the Saracens. Now opposing across the forest, we've got Mr. Yo in blue as the Italians, a cost-cutting civilization. Their university techs are cheaper, advancing to the next age is cheaper, and their gunpowder units are cheaper as well. Now using all of these discounts and all of these saved resources, the Italians can actually field two unique units, the first is the Genoese crossbow, a decent foot archer with a good attack bonus against cavalry. And by the way, and also, and also, uh, also a good attack bonus against camel units, which might prove to be quite problematic for our Saracen, very much a camel focused civilization. Their second unique unit, the Condottiero, quick moving tanky infantry unit that not only comes with a massive attack bonus against gunpowder units, but also with extra special armor against certain gunpowder units like hand cannoneers. Now to make the Italian army tanky on the field of battle, all of their foot archers except for skirmishers and their condottieri can be upgraded to get extra armor. And starting in Imperial Age, the condottieri can be built out of their barracks. Don't see a barracks right now, but I'm sure we will. <laughs> um, so think of the Goths, the way it works with Huskarls being able to be built from their barracks, except Unlike the Goths who have to research a tech called Anarchy, the Italians get this for free once they hit Imperial. Like I said, a cost savings, a cost cuttings, a resource saving, cost cutting civilization. Man, I am getting tongue tied. Putting that baby down for a nap was no f easy feat. What is this? Our Saracen already getting stone. Actually, not a big surprise. Uh, there was a Reddit thread posted many many years ago by the person who actually invented the market strategy for the saracens and i'm talking about years and years ago and one of the things he said is as the saracens it's actually quite advantageous to get the stone as early as possible the viper already heading up to feudal age it is very much worth it given the price that you can sell it at i believe that is the logic behind it look i'm not going to pretend to be spirit of the law and understand the insanely fine details of the nitty gritty of the Saracen market uh, strategy. It is very powerful because again, you do save 25%, your commodity trading fee 5%, as opposed to the usual starting 30. 
and we'll see what the Viper decides to do with, uh, with this commodity trading saving. So actually, we got a pretty interesting matchup because on the one hand, you have one Civ who has a very powerful economic bonuses with all the savings. On the other side, you have a similarly powerful economic civilization with that market. And how do these players engage into each other? If the Viper goes heavy on the camels, as sometimes you see with Saracens, then our Italian will go heavy on the Condottieri if he can get his castle up. Or not the Condottieri, the Genoese crossbow, if he can get his castle up nice and early. Uh, aside from that... Oh, sorry, I think somebody was uh, doing something in my parking lot that got distracted. If our Saracen goes gunpowder, then we've got the Genoese crossbow. Now, on the other hand, the Saracen siege line is much more powerful than the Italians. I mean, the, the basically, the Saracens, I think, are only missing heavy scorpion. And so their siege might be able to just absolutely run amok here, especially with the counterweights upgrade. That's the one where I mentioned the Trebs, Mangonels, and Onagers can be upgraded to increase their attack by 15%. Makes them super deadly and not a, a tech, an upgrade, whatever you want to call it, that we see very often. But one that I'm always excited to see potentially. And I'll take a look at that. The Viper sold his stone going up to Castle. Mr. Yo knows that this is a possibility only a hundred food away himself. Both players, uh, I was going to say stables, blacksmith and a market, blacksmith and a market, except the difference is Viper saves a hundred wood building this market for only 75 populations. Very similar, 22 villages for our Saracen, 24 for Mr. Yo, who is housed, but he doesn't care because he can't produce villagers right now. He is going up to castle. So being housed, not really that big of a deal shoring up his very weak palisades uh th is this one of the only maps where it actually benefits you in the early stages to be humans with the extra 33 percent palisade in any event it is the viper moving forward with a very aggressive proxy barracks here a lot of you like my starcraft reference to the proxy racks and look at this using the uh relic to uh to create a wall off not something we see every day but of course when you watch the viper Anything and everything is possible. Let's take a look at his vision. He's seen everything uh, in the immediate perimeter of his opponent's base. Mr. Yo, I think we saw his scout over here. So yes, he's seen the exact same thing. But take a look at Mr. Yo's map vision. How much more map vision our Italian has seen. Oh. Okay. One thing I didn't consider, which I probably should have as a caster of this game is that not only do the Saracens have a pristine archer line, but they have an absolutely pristine monk line as well. 100 wood for 107 gold at this stage of the game is pretty damn fantastic. So if he starts mixing in Siege of Manganel immediately, monk immediately. Oh man, the Viper did not like getting douched by Mr. Yo as the Persian decides to do the Saracen douche. <laughs> oh man. Saracen Siege mixed with Saracen Monks mixed with a few Spearmen. What the hell can engage into that kind of army? We'll leave it to Mr. Yo to show us if there's any player that can take a beating and win a game. It is Mr. Yo. We have seen him have his base destroyed. We've seen him, uh, for lack of a better word, penetrated through the center, through the flanks and still win games. But right now, it is the Viper with an army supply of 5 to 1. Oh man, a second Monastery! Are we going to see Monk play out of the Viper? Mr. Yo, what is he doing? He went full economy with two town centers. That is 550 wood, 200 stone that he has not spent on military. And this Mangonel is here. His Siege Workshop is up, though. Walls himself away from the Viper. Although the Viper can go around. We'll take town center fire if he does. Look at this motley crew, this army that the Viper has assembled. The scraps, let's call it. A mangonel, a spearman, two monks, two villagers. What the hell are the two villagers here for? Oh, I can only imagine to repair the mangonel. Another mangonel from the Viper. And that is all she wrote. Look at this beautiful infrastructure that he's built. And now he's shooing Mr. Yo away from his woodline. But Mr. Yo's got a town center. The town center is very exposed here to the south. Starting to destroy houses. The one thing Mr. Yo has is time at the moment. Because take a look at the firing rate of the Mangonel. Six seconds 
between attacks. But look at this, the Viper. Not exactly an Ethiopian siege. Oh my god, the Viper just got redemption as this Mangonel popped into view. Is he going to convert the Mangonel? Again, pristine, absolutely clear, clear, beautiful monk line for the Saracens. Not missing a single upgrade. But he's not an Imperial, so he can't get block printing. He can't increase their range to 12. He'll have to do with 9. Viper deletes his Mangonel. Oh my goodness, when's the last time we saw a scout get converted? I, I, I had to be silent there. Okay, monks spread out. Viper deletes again. Or not Viper, oh my god, Mr. Yo deletes again. But not before getting a Mangonel of the Vipers. And now his house center is under attack. What is happening in this game? The Viper's building houses inside Mr. Yo's base. Scouts and more scouts are out. Did he add a stable to here? No, he did not, so he must have a stable back home. I don't want to check. I don't want to even look away for a second because there's so much action happening here. Another siege workshop. He, oh my god, the Viper converted the siege up redemption. Such a powerful uh, monk upgrade. Was it Spirit of the Law that actually had recently had a video? I think it was... I mean, it must be Spirit of the Law, right? When he ranked the monk upgrades? I mean, Italians have redemption too. He's getting a second monk out, but the Viper's already got six monks with a seventh on the way. How do you engage into this as Mr. Yo? I said he if any player can hold the line, even when he's pushed into like this, it is him. Will he get this? Will he get this? Probably not. But how do you hold the line against this? The Viper is making himself out. Take a look at the Viper's uh, vision, by the way. This is so gross. He got a convert on a mangonel as well. Oh my god. Things are going from bad to worse here for our Italian. I don't think he was expecting this kind of a major push. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gotten those two town centers. Like I said in the beginning, the uh, siege for the Saracens, much, much better. But at this stage of the game, I don't see them. They're not that different. I think the differences come in later on in the game where the Italians, for example, oh my god, will he lose this? Where the Italians have no siege rams, no siege onagers, no heavy scorpion siege engineers. These are not castle age disadvantages. These are imperial age disadvantages. And oh my god, no more siege workshops for our Italian who rebuilds. Uh, okay, mining camp down south, but getting redemption as well. Monks with 45 HP. Means he got Sanctity. Vipers also Sanctity, but moving at a 0 0.8 means that he got Fervor as well. Let's take a look at Mr. Yo's Monks. 0 0.7, so they are without Fervor. What they are getting is Atonement. Fascinating. He wants to convert the Monks of the Viper, but how the hell do you convert this? Both, both players getting Atonement. <laughs> this game. This game is so bonkers already. Look. If you're, uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. What the hell took you so long? If you're not new to the channel, you know most of the games that I cast are in the 45-minute-plus uh, range. Oh, the Viper converting a monk. But these two players, it seems like... Oh, my God. These two players, uh, the last few games, seem hell-bent. Oh my, the Viper sees it hell-bent on destroying each other as fast as possible. Maybe they made some kind of agreement. Maybe they met before these games and said, Hey, look, I'm going to have a very fancy schmancy hourglass. And I'm going to flip it upside down. And it has 30 minutes. It has 25 minutes. Another convert on a monk. Why isn't he attacking this monk? Will he lose the mangonel? Or will he lose his monk? He loses the monk before he loses the mangonel. And look at this cocky monk just hanging out underneath the town center. They must have a, an hourglass that they flip upside down and say, hey, you've got five minutes, you've got 20 minutes, you've got an hour to beat me, although the last game took, what, 16, 17 minutes? Mr. Yo, double the villager population, but one army supply. Where is his army supply? It is the monk 
that is moving around the town center. What do you do as Mr. Yo? How do you not give in? This is like when you, uh, you know, when you watch, as we all do, these survival shows with like Bear Grylls and I don't know, whoever else, as if anyone here is going to be, you know, <laughs> jumping from a helicopter into the Arctic Ocean. But they say the first thing that happens when you fall into a, like through a lake and as a Canadian, that is actually a real possibility. And especially as a Canadian who likes to go ice fishing, falling through a lake, through the ice into a freezing cold lake is a real possibility. The first thing that happens to you, you're apparently your brain just like shuts off. Your body goes into shock. You don't know what to do. So you have to really, really try very hard to think. I imagine that's exactly what's happening right now with Mr. Yo. How the hell do you recover from this? What does the brain do? What does it think of? Does manage to get a convert on a mangonel. So now we've got two mangonels to two for a brief, shiny, beautiful moment. Mr. Yo hit parody. Mangonel parody. But Viper back up to two. He's got just the one, misses the monk, does tickle away the HP, might get another one, Mr. Yo, but a very, very weak one, which the Viper is doing him a favor repairing at the moment. Okay. But again, Mr. Yo's body must be in shock. His mind must be reeling, thinking, what the hell do I do here? Do I continue? With my wood, with my stone, is he trying to get a castle up? Is he trying to get towers up? Is he trying to get another town center up? What is he doing? Monks attacking being attacked, rather, by villagers. Monks converting monks. Oh my god. And yet again, we have a very low kill count game between these two. But perhaps an incredibly exciting, one of the most exciting games. The Viper here. Just absolutely beast moding it in. And what the hell can Mr. Yo do? He's down to five monks. How's their faith? Where are they? They're in here. One, two, three of them don't even have faith to perform a conversion. Monk on monk violence. Oh, the Viper gets it. The Viper gets it, but we'll lose it immediately. Town center attacking it. Monk's converting it. Let's see if Mr. Yo can get any of these mangonels. They are firmly fixed. Their eyes are firmly fixed on this town center. No, instead he loses the two monks to the Vipers. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, what a... Is anyone surprised by that result? Oh my god. Just absolute shock and awe out of our Saracen. Holy shit. Holy shit. I try not to swear a lot. Sometimes I fail, but oh, 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 oh man, what a game. Where's that stable? I've been itching to see it. Where did he get the... Did he just convert the second scout? Is that what, it, what happened? The whole game I'm waiting to go back to see a stable. Instead, I see a bunch of houses. I think the Viper just converted that unit. Okay, we'll try to catch that in picture in picture. Gold line decimated. Villager count. Now, he used to be 44 to 24, 47 to 24. Now it's 38 to 32. His resources, garbage. The Viper, fully up and running, penetrated the entire eastern portion of Mr. Yo's base. Secures his primary gold patch. Secondary gold patch. Tertiary gold patch. Oh my god. And what the hell are you going to do with this one tower? Mr. Yo just not getting the converts. I mean, I know the conversions, the way they work is uh, is almost like a random number generator, right? There's a uh, minimum number of seconds. There's a maximum number of seconds. Uh, or maybe just a minimum. But it can be in a range. It didn't really seem like Mr. Yo's monks were converting very quickly when he was trying to convert these two mangoes and instead lost his own monks. Oh my god. That's like throwing a boomerang and getting hit in the back of the head with it. 31 monks to 15, 135 APM. Uh, right at the end of the game. Uh, middle of the game. Middle of the game. I was thinking of the last game that lasted 19 or so minutes. This one's in the middle for the Viper. Mr. Yo, right at the beginning. Oh, uh, we got to see the converts. Who cares about the economy? 24 converts, but also losing 10. Also, losing 10 is not... Uh, I mean, whatever. It's less than 50% of your conversion. Army high 20, of course. I'm army high 6. Look at this. It's the exact opposite of the other day's game where the Viper... Uh, his army supply was much, much lower. Economy, not that it matters at all. Look how much more gold our Saracen took. Look how much more stone... Enough wood to build a few mangonels, getting converts on others. Wow. Wow. Absolute fun. I mean, Monk. 
the question is, did the Viper have these individual monks on individual control groups? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I believe comes after eight. Or did he just uh, use his crazy APM? It wasn't like hero level, but you know, 135, fairly relaxed. Kill count 22 to 14, 11 villager kills to one. Oh man, like I said, Mr. Yo got dunked in an ice cold lake known as Viper Lake when the Saracens showed up at his doorstep. I think he got wind of this fairly early on. I'll take a look uh, where, what the hell happened to his scout. But wow, the Viper putting on just an absolute delightful clinic. And like I said, even though the Saracens do technically have the better siege line, I believe even counterweights is an Imperial technology. Their advantage comes in an Imperial. So right now, there's no real difference between this Mangonel and an Italian Mangonel, right? It's not a Siege Onager. It's not even a basic Onager. Wow. No counterweights. No Imperial. Means it was just a pure monk on monk. Siege on siege. Violent altercation here. And yeah. What, what, what's, what else is left to say except the Viper? Shock and awe. Overwhelmed his opponent with Monk. With giant flingy balls and just destroys Mr. Yo, who put on, to be honest, 29 minutes is a pretty valiant defense. Uh, most players would have either GG'd by now. Look at this. Even getting more vision. <laughs> the Viper. Most players would have GG'd many, many moons ago. But to last 29 minutes against this kind of aggression, to have the economy to keep producing uh, monks and siege and trying to, uh, I'm going to use the word snipe, but let's say snipe convert these units was absolutely fantastic. So an impressive attack, an impressive defense, but at the end of the day in this game, the Viper overwhelms Mr. Yo, gets the big W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.